Okay, in our video series of ECG interpretation made easy by six step method, in this video we are going to talk about left bundle branch block. Now, normally SA node produces electrical currents, those electrical currents spread through the internodal pathways to the AV node, and from AV node they go to the right and left bundle branches and result in contraction of the ventricles. Now, whenever there is a block on the left bundle branch side, the currents will flow normally to the right side. The current will normally flow to the right side of the ventricle, but there will be no current flow to the left side. There will be no current flow to the left ventricle. On ECG, what you will see is that there will be a P wave due to the contraction of the atria. And after that, due to the depolarization of the right ventricle, there will be a QRS complex. Now what happens is that after some time, the right ventricle that is having the current will send these electrical signals slowly to the left side and the left side will also get depolarized but that will be a slow process. So after some time, there will be another QRS complex, another QRS complex due to depolarization of the left ventricle. So the first QRS was due to the depolarization of the right ventricle and after that there will be depolarization of the left ventricle that will appear as a second QRS complex. This is called as an M wave which is a combination of two QRS complexes because the ventricles are not contracting in synchrony. The ventricles are not depolarizing altogether. If both ventricles depolarize together there will be a normal QRS one wave. But these ventricles are depolarizing separately. There will be first depolarization of the right ventricle and then there will be depolarization of the left ventricle. Therefore, you see two QRS complexes as M wave also called as the rabbit ears. Now in left bundle branch block, this M wave is seen in V5, V6. In V6, you see this M wave. Now in our previous video on a right bundle branch block, this M wave was also there, but this M wave was in V1. In left bundle branch block, this M wave is in V6. In right bundle branch block, this M wave in is V1. So there is an M wave in V6 lead. Coming to the QRS morphology in lead V1, in V1 you will see deep wide RS pattern. The S wave will be deep, there will be slurring of the S wave. This is how S wave appears. Now, the first deflection is of the R wave and after that, this deflection is the S wave. The, look at the deep S wave. Look at the slurring of the S wave. That is the slurring or deep S wave seen in V1. Now, in the lateral leads in V6, in V5, what you will see is that you will see an M wave. So this is a classical presentation of left bundle branch block. Now if you compare it with right bundle branch block, in right bundle branch block, M wave is seen in V1 and S wave is seen in V6. It is opposite to the left bundle branch block. The Q waves will be absent. The Q waves appear due to septal depolarization. The QRS complex, the small Q wave, the negative deflection of Q wave appears because when the current flow from AV node to left and right bundle branches, the left side depolarizes first and it sends signals to the right one. That appears as a small Q wave. Now, since the left side is blocked and right side is sending signals to the left side, therefore you won't see the Q wave. And there will be left axis deviation because the current is flowing from the right side to the left side. So there will be a left axis deviation. Now, this is the M wave seen in V6. Now, if you look at this ECG in V1, you can see the QRS complex and look that the Q wave is absent. There is no Q wave. The Q wave, the small negative deflection before the R wave, the QRS complex, the Q wave is absent. And look at the slurring of the S wave, the deep S wave. And look at the slurring of the S wave in V2. There is also slurring of the S wave in V3. And now look at the V5 and V6. You can appreciate the M wave in V5 and V6. Now that is a classical presentation of left bundle branch block. M wave in V6, slurring of S wave in V1. Now we will solve this ECG by a six step method. Look at this ECG and then we will solve this ECG by a six step method. 
now let's solve this ecg what is your general impression the general impression is that the ecg does not look normal it is not very fast it is not very slow the general impression is that the ecg looks wide and it has some ugly morphologies in it now i have talked about these six step methods in which you first look at the general impression the calibration then the rhythm interpretation first three steps then qrs complex hypertrophy and ischemia I have talked about these things in detail in my previous videos, how to uh, see R wave progression, excess deviation, how to see the calibration in detail in my previous videos. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Now if you look at the calibration, the calibration, a normal standard calibration is seen by this box and the calibration should be two large boxes tall, one large box wide. So it is a normal calibration. It is a standard calibration. It means that the ECG machine is printing out the paper at 25 millimeter per second. Now let's look at the rhythm. The rhythm, the P waves are present and P waves are followed by these QRS complexes. P waves are followed by QRS complexes. So this is a sinus rhythm. Now let's calculate the heart rate. We have to calculate the number of large boxes between the R waves. Between the two R waves, there are three large boxes present. One, two, three large boxes between the two R waves. One large box is equal to 300 beats per minute, two large boxes 150 beats per minute, three large boxes is 100 and it is slightly more than that so it is 90 to 100 beats per minute. Sinus rhythm at the rate of 90 beats per minute. Now let's look at the R wave progression. If you look at the R wave progression in hexaxial lead, the AVR should be negative, the QRS should be negatively deflected or in all other leads it should be positively deflected. So it is positively deflected in one, positively deflected in two. It is negatively deflected in 3 which is not normal. In a VL it is positively deflected, in a VF it is again negatively deflected. So it is a not, it is not a normal R wave progression, it is poor. In V1, V2 it should be negatively deflected and in V5, V6 it should be positively deflected and it, it is like this. So it is a normal R wave progression in uh, precordial leads but we label it as a poor R wave progression since we have an abnormality over here. The R wave progression is poor. Now let's look at the axis. In the axis, you have to look at lead 1 and lead AVF. If lead 1 and AVF, the QRS complexes is positively deflected, that is a normal axis. Now in lead 1, it is positively deflected. In AVF, it is negatively deflected. So they are pointing away from each other. In the left axis deviation, the QRS complexes leave. So it is a left axis deviation. Let's look at the bundle branch blocks. So we have an m wave now if now that m wave is not very prominent in v6 sometime it it can happen that there can be a small notch that qrs complex can present like this that small notch on it shows that this is a combination of two qrs complexes that appears like this a small notch is present over it that can be cleared if you look at the other leads now look at this this shows that the q there are two qrs complexes that have been combined and there is slurring of S wave over here in V1, V2, V3. So there is left bundle branch blocks. So the rhythm interpretation will be that it is a sinus rhythm at 90 beats per minute with left axis deviation and left bundle branch block. Now coming to the second ECG. Now what you should do is that you should pause the video and you should solve these ECGs yourself. Solve this ECG so that you learn from it be it that you uh, uh, comment a wrong answer but try to do solve these ecgs at least now let's solve this ecg now the general impression is that the ecg looks fast and there are wide qrs complexes so it is it looks wide and it looks fast let's look at the calibration now since the uh, calibration marker has been cut off we cannot see the box and we'll just label it that it is a standard calibration now let's look at the rhythm there are p waves present in the rhythm strip so p waves are followed by qrs complexes the p waves are married to the qrs complexes so that is a normal sinus rhythm it is a sinus rhythm now let's calculate the heart rate if we count the number of large boxes between the rr interval we have one two and more than two so we have 300 150 almost 100 uh, 5 to 125 beats per minute that's the rate in this ecg sinus tachycardia at the rate of 105 beats per minute 
Now let's look at the R wave progression. In the R wave progression, the AVR should be negatively deflected, the QRS should be negative. In all other hexaxial lead, it should be positively deflected. So it is negatively deflected in V2, negatively deflected in 3, negatively deflected in AVF, which is not normal. So it is a poor R wave progression. If we look at the v lead precordial leads, in precordial leads, it is a negative, it should be negatively deflected in V1, V2, which is the case. It should be positively deflected and it is also positively deflected. So it is normal in the precordial leads, but it is abnormal in the hexaxial leads. So R wave progression is poor. Let's look at the axis. For axis, we have to look at lead 1 and lead AVF. 1 is pointing upwards, AVF is pointing downwards. So if they are pointing away from each other, they are leaving each other, the left leaves. So that is a left axis deviation. Normal is that both should be pointing upward. Let's look at the bundle branches. In the bundle branches, we have the notch, we have the notch, we have the M wave in V5, V6. Although it's not very prominent, but the picture quality is also poor, but there is a notch. As I said, the presence of a small notch also indicates that it is a combination of two uh, QRS complexes. So when you solve these difficult ECGs, the simplers become even more simpler for you. You might not be able to find classical M wave all the time. There might be even presence of a small notch. In V1, uh, in V1 and V2, you see the deep S wave. So that is that shows the left bundle branch block. Now, in the subsequent videos, we'll be talking about hypertrophies and we'll talking we'll talk about ischemia, the last two step of ECG interpretation. Now, the rhythm interpretation is that this is a sinus tachycardia at the rate of 105 to 125 beats per minute with left axis deviation and left bundle branch block. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and make sure to check out my other videos on ECG interpretation made easy. The link of those videos is given in the description below. We talked about how does M wave appear in V6, the deep S wave in V1, absent Q waves, left axis deviation can be seen. Some ECGs with left bundle branch block, look at the M wave, look at the deep S wave, then we solved some ECGs. At the end, we solved some ECGs. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and make sure to check out my other videos on ECG interpretation made easy and right bundle branch block video. The link of those videos are given in the description below. Thank you very much.